Welcome back to this video on atoms, elements, mixtures, molecules, and compounds. Now that's kind of a mouthful and you may be wondering why did I include all of these together in one video? The answer to that is that as we study chemistry these are some vocabulary words that it is just imperative that you understand. It shouldn't be too difficult. You already know the first two, atoms and elements. So really what you'll be getting today are mixtures, molecules, and compounds. All right, we already talked about atoms and elements. We said that elements can be found on the periodic table. They are pure substances. And we said that atoms are the smallest piece of an element that can still be the element. For example, here we have carbon. Carbon is element number six on the periodic table. That means that it has six protons. And we see the Bohr model off here to the left. We can see the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus and the electrons circling that nucleus, nucleus in the electron cloud. Uh, some things that are made out of carbon are the graphite in your pencil, the charcoal in your grill, and you may or may not know this, but a diamond is actually carbon that is being pressed under tons and tons and tons of pressure inside the earth over a long period of time and carbon turns into diamonds. Let's look at a couple of other elements. Sodium. Sodium is a metal. It's found in group one or family one of the periodic table because it has one valence electron. It's a very dangerous metal because it'll start on fire if you expose it to water. So in order to store it we keep it underneath oil in a jar, sealed jar, to keep it away from the moisture in the air. It is element number 11. It has 11 protons and uh, it has a mass of 22.990. That's a average of all the sodium atoms that we can find. All right, one more. Chlorine gas. We've talked about chlorine before. It is a nonmetal found on the right side of the periodic table. It's actually in group number 17 and it has seven valence electrons, seven. And you may recall that we said uh, that those elements in group 17 are very reactive, almost as reactive as those in group one. So we'll come back to these a little later. So let's start looking at some of these other terms. We'll start with mixture. You're familiar with mixtures. You've seen them before. Here's a common one, Chex Mix. What is it a mixture of? Well, if you look at this picture, you can see that it's a mixture of cereal. And you can see that it's got some pretzels and possibly some peanuts in it. And what's really important about a mixture is if you look at it carefully, you'll see that everything is the same as it was originally. Nothing has changed. It's all the same stuff, substances mixed together, possibly in a bowl, I guess. And they have the same characteristics as when they started. So that's one of the key identifiers of a mixture. Let's look at some more. Here we have sand on the left and pebbles on the right. What would we get if we mix those together? Well, we would get sand and pebbles mixed together. That's about it. We would not get a new substance. It would still be sand and pebbles. And if we worked really, really hard, we could probably separate those two back out into their uh, original substances without too much difficulty. All right, let's talk about some elements on the periodic table. Here we have iron filings on the left, we have gold filings in the middle, and we have silver filings on the right side. What would we get if we mixed them all together? Do you think they would react to one another? Probably not. They might over time if we mix some oxygen in and some other things with them, they may, they may react a little bit. But for the most part, they're not going to react. And we're just going to have a mixture of iron, gold and silver. It would be the same thing. Now don't get the idea that mixtures have to be all solids. They can be gases and they can be liquids. Here's an example. The air that you breathe. Most people mistakenly say that we're breathing oxygen. And yes, that's what our body needs the most of. We do use oxygen to stay alive. But air is not just oxygen. Air is a mixture of all these gases plus a few more. So air is an example of gases that are actually a mixture. All right, after seeing those examples, can you come up with a definition for a mixture? 
See if you can and then come back and I'll give it to you. All right, welcome back. I hope you got your definition. Let's see if yours matches mine. A mixture is a combination of substances that do not chemically react and they keep their original characteristics. They're the same as when we put them in there, okay? Nothing changes and that's a very key uh, concept that you need to understand. In a mixture, when we put things together, nothing changes. It's just this combination of all the original items. So let's compare that now to a compound. A compound is formed when two or more elements chemically react to form a new substance that is different from the originals. Okay, let's look at that. You get a reaction. You get a new substance. And that substance is very different from the originals. Oftentimes you can't even tell what it started with. It's so different. Let's look at some examples of compounds. All right, here I have some elements. I'm going to start mixing some atoms together. I'm going to take one atom of oxygen and I'm going to add two atoms of hydrogen to it. So what do you think I'm going to have when those react together? I'm going to get a totally new substance and you'll probably recognize this substance as water. H2O, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom equals water. Water is a compound. Water is a compound. So let's try another one. All right, I'm going to take one atom of carbon. I'm going to take two atoms of oxygen. So I've got carbon and oxygen. What do I get when those react together? Well, I get C, one C, two O, C, O, two, which you will know as carbon dioxide. And you probably know that we breathe out carbon dioxide and green leafy plants, on the other hand, breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. So we got kind of this circle of life going here where we're providing the plants with CO2 that they need and the plants in turn provide us with O2, but CO2. All right, let's try one more. I'm going to take a sodium atom and I'm going to combine it with a chlorine atom. Now you may recall that we said those are both dangerous substances. What do we get when we combine sodium and chlorine? Well, you might say sodium chloride and you would be right, but we also know it as table salt. How, how cool is that? You take two very dangerous and poisonous chemicals and you mix them together and when they react we get something that we can put on our french fries and on our potato chips and it tastes good. Salt. Table salt is nothing but sodium and chlorine that has reacted to form this totally new substance that we all love on our food. Awesome. All right, there's one more vocabulary word we want to look at, and that is a molecule. We've already been looking at molecules. We've had a water molecule, H2O. We had a carbon dioxide molecule, CO2. And we had a sodium chloride or salt molecule, NaCl. So what is a molecule? Well, a molecule is the smallest piece of a compound that is still the compound. Let me say that again. A molecule is the smallest piece of a compound that is still that compound. Now that definition should sound somewhat familiar with, to you. Remember when we talked about atoms and elements? We said that atoms are the smallest piece of an element and a molecule is the smallest piece of a compound. So let's make that comparison. An atom is to an element as a molecule is to a compound. An element is pure. A compound is not necessarily pure substance. And a molecule is the smartest, smallest part of a compound. And an atom is the smallest part of an element. Pretty easy, right? All right, I want to show you some models and let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Would you say that this model represents atoms or molecules? Well, they're all the same. I only see one atom here. So I would say these are indeed atoms. I just gave it away, sorry. But these are indeed atoms. Now, would you say that this is a uh, mixture 
or an element or a compound? Well, since all of these atoms are the same, and I don't see any others mixed in with it, this must be an element. So these are atoms, and this represents an element. Let's look at another one. How about this one? Well, if you look at these, you can see that we now have two different types of atoms. We got a yellow triangle and a red circle, all um, grouped together, I guess you will, or bound together by a chemical reaction, so to speak. So would you say that these are atoms? or that they represent molecules? In this case, the answer is molecules. These are molecules. They're bound together, as we said earlier. Would you say that this is an element or a mixture? Or would you say that this is a compound? Well, if you said compound, you would be right. We've got all of these molecules, and they're all the same. So this is a compound. Let's look at another one. All right, this one's a little bit different. If you see here, we got some orange rectangles. And we've also got these that are made up of hexagons and an oval. So this would probably represent a molecule. You're right on that. And this would represent an atom. All right. Now, would you say that this is a mixture or a element or a compound? All right, that's kind of a trick question because we, here we have atoms, which means it's a pure element. Here we have um, molecules, which means it's a compound, and they're mixed together. So what we have here is actually a mixture of elements or an element and a compound. All right, let's try one more. Here we have, that looks like that would be a, would you say that's an atom or a, or a uh, molecule? Yeah, I'd say that's a molecule also. Would you say this is a atom or a molecule? Yep, that's a molecule also. And you can see that we got two different types. Uh, they're kind of mixed together. So would you say that this is an, an element, a mixture, or a compound? The answer is that this is a mixture of compounds. We got two different compounds and they're mixed together. So we can have both like that. All right, this is the last one we're going to look at today. So here I have what appears to be two atoms that are bound together. They're stuck together. Yet they're the same type of atom. So would you say that this is an atom? These represent atoms, or would you say these represent molecules? Again, this is kind of a trick question. These are actually molecules because you have two atoms that are bound together. And um, yet, it's still a pure substance. So this is an element. But at the same time, you can say that these are molecules of that element. And this could represent something like, um, let me give you an example. If we take like oxygen, and we've got two of those atoms bound together like we do here, we would call that O2. And actually, that's the form that most oxygen takes in our atmosphere. All right, so I hope you found this video uh, very useful. If not, you may want to go back and look at it again or ask your teacher some questions. I do thank you for taking time to, to watch this video. And as always, keep on learning, my friends. And until next time, take care.